everyone. Welcome to the Sip and Spin. I am the Tipsy Spinster, and tonight's show is kind of a segue show in between one breed study and another breed study for the Shave 'em to Save 'em. I realized as I jumped in and got going with this project, it's actually going to take me a lot longer than I thought in order to really do a good job of talking about the different breeds. So tonight in my glass is Lava Cap Rosé. For those of you that have been following me for a while, you'll know that Lava Cap is absolutely my favorite winery. It's located in the foothills of California. Please check out their website. They are located on a beautiful mountain and the volcanic soil really lends itself well to the flavors of the wines that they have to offer. Tonight in my glass is their summer rosé and it's perfect. Today was our first 80 degree day. We had sunshine and thunderstorms. Ah, spring in the Midwest. So a quick recap. Last show, I talked about the two recovering breeds on the Shave 'em to Save 'em list again. That is the Livestock Conservancy's three year project to pair fiber artists and spinners with farmers of these breeds. The first sheep that I took a look at was a Shetland lamb named Tango. This is the raw fleece, or this is the lock. This is the processed fleece, and I learned from this fleece that Shetland does well with combs. I didn't like the look of it when I carded it because it had a lot of nups in it. The other land, or the other sheep that I worked with is South Down, and this is from a ewe named Jumper. And the fun thing with South Down is it is really, really, really springy. And that's one of the things, it's a down fiber. And this is the yarn spun and Slide, and I'm really looking forward to working with it. I spun this on my wheel. Now the Shetland is on one of my support spindles and I realized that in order to really get in and look at these breeds and do these breeds justice, I also needed to look at the best way to spin them. And it came up that there were a few viewers who wanted to know a little bit more about using a support spindle. There are two kinds of spindles. There are drop spindles and there are support spindles. A drop spindle is going to have a whorl either on the top or the bottom. It's going to be suspended and spun. Support spindles, on the other hand, are going to require some kind of support in order for them to work. Even though they have whorls on them, they're still going to need some support. So let's start talking about a few of these. Probably the most traditional style support spindle is a Fang style spindle. These are actually vintage from Russia. So these are two vintage Russian spindles and these would have been used to make lace weight yarn for some of the Estonian shawls. And if you look up Estonian shawls and look up those patterns, you'll realize that the lace was spun woolen and it was spun very, very fine. And that's what I've been doing on my support spindle that I got from Germany. This is a horsed spindle and it's very similar in style to some of the now becoming very well known woodland woodworking spindles. It has the bowl on it, it has a beautifully carved shaft, and this is Tango that I've started spinning on it. Now, I'm not going to be able to get an empty weight on this one because I've already got it and I wasn't going to take this off because I'm still working on filling this one. But let's take a look at some of these others. The weight of the spindle is going to affect how you use it. So let's start talking a little bit about these. So I've got my scale. So the traditional Fang style Russian spindle comes in at a mere five eighths of an ounce. Okay, so we've got five eighths of an ounce, my slightly longer one, seven eighths. This is a modern spindle that I ordered from Siberia. It's also coming in at 5 8 but if you'll notice, it's very shiny and it's been lacquered and it's very slippery as opposed to the coarser wood here. Some of the other ones, 
This I had custom made. It's another Fang style Russian spindle. This is com from V Count Woodworking and they can be found on Etsy. This one's a heavier spindle. One and three eighths ounces. When I first started using the support spindles, I started with the really, really light one, and I got very frustrated by it. When I started using the one from V-Count, I actually had much better luck. And it came with the bowl that actually rests in between your legs. So it's got a longer bowl style on it, and I'll talk about the bowls a little more in a second. The other spindles that I have, I have a chock chock or a rattle spindle from Straddle Creek Spins. They're also located on Etsy. It has a captured ring on it that rattles when you spin it, which is fun. This is a Mirkwood spindle, and this is Smog the Golden. It's also a heavier spindle. Stay, stay, stay. One and five eighths ounces. The nice thing with these two spindles Straddle Creek and Mirkwood, they both put a metal bearing on the bottom, which when you spin them, these two spindles will literally spin forever, it seems. I know. There's my hyperbole for today. It seems like they spin for forever. Mirkwood is cool too because They've got the jewel on the end, which I really like. And then this is the horse spindle from Germany that I had made. And then the last one that I want to talk about is the John Galen. And this is the heaviest one that I have. This is absolutely a support spindle, and you have to use a bowl for it, even though it has the hook on the top. And this one weighs in at one and one-fourth ounce. So it's actually quite heavy. So those are kind of a rundown of the spindles. You have all different kinds of bowls and ways that you can actually do these. I'll get to the Navajo later. Don't worry, I'll get there. The reason why I started with these little ones is to work up to this. And that'll make sense when I get up to this one and show you how to use this one. Now, how you support these spindles, lots of different ways. You have the bean bag with the bowl. You have the singing bowl, which really does sing, which is very cool. You have the wood with the inlay, the glass inlay in it, just the regular wooden bowl. And then you can also get ceramic bowls as well. And I do have, I think I've got a bunch of stuff in it though. I also have, I do, because I keep stuff in it. So I also have the ceramic bowl that you can use as well. I don't use this one very often because it holds stuff. Okay, so let's get in and start talking about the kinds of fibers that you spin with a support spindle. Shetland lends itself to support spinning. So does Navajo Churro. South Down, I would not want to try and spin on a support spindle because it's so short. The other one that works well is Merino. And for those of you that have been following me on Instagram, You'll know that I've talked quite a bit about avocado. This is avocado's baby fleece. Avocado is a merino lamb from Ironwater Ranch. And I grabbed avocado's fleece because I fell in love with these beautiful colors, not realizing that a merino fleece, as fine as it is, was going to be a challenge to work with. This fiber, even though it looks like it's been combed, has actually just been flick carded. I'm flick carding the locks, and then I'm spinning thread on the support spindle. So let's get started. How do we start spinning on a support spindle? I'm going to start with, oh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I don't know where I want to start. Um... I am not going to show you this one because I don't like using it. I'm going to start with this one. So I've seen quite a few support spindles that are similar to this. They've got the knob here, which is really something cool to look for. If you can find one, this one has a little bit 
of an indent. This one has a little bit of an indent. This one actually has a hook on it, and that comes in so handy, and that'll make sense in just a second. I've also seen the support spindles that have whorls on the bottom to varying degrees, and that's great, but you don't necessarily need them. And if you'll notice, these are very similar to the Navajo spindle. And when I realized how similar they were, I had an aha moment. I realized that they all spin pretty much the same way. This spindle took me years to figure out how to spin on. It wasn't until I started playing with my support spindles that I finally figured out how to use the big one. So, aha moment. All right, so how do we get started? Just like you would with a drop spindle, you're going to want to start up at the top. Now, support spindles, because this is long, I usually keep it down at my side. And for these longer ones, I like my bean bag because it just sits and the tip just rests in there like so, and it's down and it's off to the side. When you are spinning with a support spindle, you are going to be doing long draw. The fiber that I'm using, I'm sticking with Shetland. This is Shetland from Blue Moon Alpaca. And to start out, I'm going to draft. And I've got it hooked on the tip. And I will pull it out. Now, with these long ones, especially this one, what I've seen a lot of new spinners do is they start down here and try to work their way up. To my knowledge, there's no law that says you have to start down here. As long as you're winding on to your bobbin consistently, you can pretty much start wherever you want. So I'm going to bring that down. And I'm going to wind on this way. It's going to be a lot easier than trying to come from down here all the way up here. And I can move it down later if I want to. And then I will just continue to draft out. If I need to thin the fiber, I can. Putting in the twist. So this is the longer, and I'm spinning thick. I can spin much, much, much thinner, but I just want you to see how easy it is. So there's that one. Next, Smog the Golden. Same idea. Now with Smog, I usually use this guy. Yeah. Same idea. I'm going to start at the top. When I have enough of a leader, I will oops, come back, move it down, I don't really even need a bowl for this guy. There we go. 
Now, the problem I run into when I am doing a support spindle is the same thing that I run into with most of my drop spindles. I run out of arm. So if you'll notice, I'm twisting, stopping, drafting. It's a little bit like park and draft, and then thinning it out as I go to get the consistency and the evenness that I want. And remember when you first started spinning and you had to figure out how far you could pull the fiber before it broke? When you're working with a support spindle, it's kind of the same thing. Because if I pull too much, of course it's going to come apart and I am going to have to, just like with everything else, figure out a way to reattach it. But it's just as easy. Oh, so it breaks. I don't like breaking fibers when I do this because personally I find it hard to reconnect them. There's a solid join. All right. So there's Smog the Golden. All right. And next, the rattle. Some of you are going to be like, ah, make it stop, make it stop. It's not that bad. The rattle is not bad at all. And the cool thing that I discovered with this one is it will also work as a drop spindle. So with the straddle creek, I would have to say one of the things that I love most about this spindle, this right here is the perfect, it, it's the perfect width for spinning. It, it just rolls right between your index finger and thumb. And yes, I am stopping it to pull out because I feel like just continuing to pull puts too much vibration and I'm too much of a control freak. Now, the one thing that you need to watch out for when you are doing support spindles is if you start to get this happening up at the top, if you start to get a bunch up at the top, the whole idea behind a support spindle is you're supporting it and you're essentially spinning off the tip, just like you would with a great wheel, just like you would with a penguin wheel, just like you would with a quill. If you get up at the top, if you get this happening up at the top and it starts to slip, you're not going to get good twist and it's going to be much harder to get a consistent yarn. You want to spin straight off the top so it's, it, it's very loose up at the top. I think that's the only way to describe it is you want the fiber to be loose up at the top. So spin, pull. I feel like, I feel like I'm shooting skeet. Pull. Spin. I know that's not, those aren't the right terms. Sorry for those of you that shoot skeet. 
I apologize. The reason why I like the chock chock is because I find it very relaxing. I like the rhythm of the rattle. All right, so there is the, so there, there's three different ways, three different styles to do it. The horse does not have, and I'm not going to demonstrate with this one because the horse doesn't have the tip. So we went, I'm basically showing you an evolution. So the first Russian spindle that I went to had a very pronounced tip. It was almost like a hook, which made it very easy to spin off of. The Merkwood, it just gets a little bit bigger up at the top. You've got to be careful, but you're still spinning off of this middle part, and you're still spinning off the tip. And then the Straddle Creek, same thing. These two are very similar in that they both have the ball bearing at the bottom. This one, these three are just like my Horst from Germany, although it does have the larger, kind of heavier whorl down at the bottom. And this is the Shetland that I am spinning. So this is Tango. Tango's prep was woolen, whereas the other Shetland was worsted. So if you'll notice, as I am spinning this, you can see the drafting triangle is much more pronounced. This spins so beautifully. And yes, this is going to be a shawl. So I wanted to spin it as traditionally as I could. And this is also where feel comes into play. I could feel the middle starting to slip, so I knew that was when I needed to wind on. And it goes fast. The spindle spins very similar to the Wildwood. All right. And so there is spinning straight off. And you can see how fine it is. And my colors. And those are the colors that I've got in the raw roving as well, coming through in the darks and lights. So here are all of your support spindles. The last one is thread, and this is with the singing bowl. And I've showcased this one before. So as you can see, I am going to come around and just do the hook and take a little bit. And with the hook, it's almost just like drop spindling because you don't want the twist to travel too far too fast. It's a support spindle. So when it breaks, it doesn't fall and go crashing to the floor. And that was my fault because I went way, 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 way too thin.
the merino thread and this one. So th this is so much like spinning with a drop spindle that because it's got the hook on it, it makes it a piece of cake. Now, the coup de grace, spinning with the Navajo spindle. And that is Navajo on there. So I'm going to move the table a little bit to the side. And I'll be right back after I clean up, move some things out of the way, and I will spin on the big spindle. All right. So I've already got this started because starting the Navajo, I did start up at the top just like I did with the other ones. I started way up at the top and I moved it down as I went. Now, one of the things that I've noticed with Navajo Churro fiber, it's, it's a sturdy fiber, it's a much stronger fiber, and I will be doing a whole show on it. But I wanted to show the movement of working with this spindle because I think that if you're finding this, the movement with the support spindle either in your lap or on a table, if it's not working for you, the other way to do it with any of the smaller spindles is to get it down at an angle, and it's the same idea. I'm working off the tip, and I'm just putting the twist in. So with the Navajo spindle, you can really see where I am working right up at the top, And this is almost just like how I teach. It's kind of funny. This is almost just like how I teach students drop spindling in the sense of you're spinning in the direction of the clock. You're spinning in the direction of the clock until you get what you want, until you get the energy, and then you wind on. And that's essentially what I'm doing here. So I wanted to show you with the big spindle just the idea of getting the twist going and then drafting out the fiber. to say now that I've figured out the Navajo spindle it's become one of my favorite spindles I've really enjoyed using it with the Navajo fiber so with that said I know this was kind of a long show and I apologize if it's a little bit too lengthy skip to the parts that you really like but that's kind of an overview of how I spin with support spindles. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. If you'd like to see something different, if you're kind of like, okay, I kind of have it, but could you go back and film this again? Just let me know in the comments or message me directly, and we'll try to put a show together that answers your specific questions. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I encourage you to try Support Spindle. They're a lot of fun. You can get great yarn, a lot of different weights and styles of yarn. It's very relaxing, and it's quiet, and you're less likely to drop it and have it go clanking on the floor. So Support Spindles are the perfect travel spindles. So as always, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Happy spinning.